Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory. Alleluia. Here we go. Are you ready? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Ah, oh, no, you got to do better. I, I know you guys are shy. You're at home or you know, maybe you're the only one. You got earbuds in and maybe you're the only one in your family watching this, but... But this is a day of joy. This is a day, a day not to be afraid, not to be shy, but to shout it, to rejoice in it. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. All right. I love that. We might do that a little bit later, and you can videotape yourselves doing it, and we'll, we'll share that. All right. We might need somebody at home to do the, the, the pastor part. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Maybe when we get to that, we'll throw that slide up that has those words uh, from the, oh, uh, it's the countdown slide that we used. But of course, we don't want the countdown. Well, anyway, this is a day not to be shy, not to be timid. This is a day to rejoice. These lessons invite us, encourage us to to step back from the troubles, the fears, the, the disappointments, to step back from it all and to celebrate. Or at the very least, if it's the best that might come to your heart or through your heart or out of your heart, just to have some peace today. Wow, that's, that's awesome. This is what the epistle lesson said from Colossians 3. Set your minds on things that are above. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's talking about baptism, when we are joined to Christ in a death like his. The death that is the consequence of sin, the death that would be the worst thing ever because it would be dying in the guilt of our sin and in the judgment, the negative judgment of God. That is trouble. That is watch out for that. Repent of that. Turn away from that. Invite the Lord to to work his turning, his change in your life. Because to be baptized means that we are united with Christ in the death that he died on the cross that paid for sin. It wasn't for his own sin that he died. He was an innocent man with all the weight of eternal righteousness and goodness bearing on the pro human problem of sin. And we're joined to that. That's what it says, you have died. You're baptized. Your guilt is wiped away. Set your mind on things that are above. Because your life is hidden. It's all wrapped up in Christ. The risen Christ. Because that's the other part of baptism. That we are joined in that resurrection of Christ. And that's why this resurrection day is also a celebration of our resurrection day. We have in Matthew 28, the, one of the accounts, one of the angles at the events that happened that Easter morning. Friday, Jesus was tried. He was innocent, but the crowds called for blood. They called for crucifixion, and Jesus knew that that's what, that, what, that's what was necessary because he had to go into death. Because death is the problem. Sin earns death. Death. We don't want that. God doesn't want death. It is not the enslaver of ours. It, should, it is. It shouldn't be. We should be children of God. Walking in harmony with God. So Jesus willingly went into death on the cross in the flesh for us. And as he had said, then on Sunday morning, he arose. But before that, it's interesting, the enemies of Christ, the, the same ones that sent him to the cross, they remembered what he had said, that he would rise. Of course, they didn't believe that he would rise. But they thought, well, if someone would have some conspiracy and want to pretend that he would rise and then therefore gain glory and, and power and position for themselves by a, a lie that Jesus had risen, uh, somehow 
start out where Jesus had left off. Pretend that he arose and then commissioned someone to go and be the king, to take over Jerusalem and the world. Well, we can't have a lie like that take place, right? So, so they requested an armed guard be placed at the tomb. The tomb of Jesus was sealed with a huge, massive rock, and then it was marked in a way where it would be obvious if it had been opened. It was sealed. And guards were stationed. Not just weenie guards. Like, if I was asked to be guard anything, I don't know, I'd probably get distracted. I'd probably start looking at my phone. I'd probably uh, start daydreaming. I, I wouldn't be a very good guard, but these were the real deal. But the consequence for a failure at their job would be death themselves, and so they had to do their, do their job. And who knows what was on their mind as they, they waited Friday nights throughout the day of Saturday and throughout the night. Whether they wondered if people would come to try to fight their way through them and move that stone and steal the body. They... If any of you serve in armed, the armed forces or have any positions of security, uh, there's real risks, there's real dangers. We lived through that here in El Paso just last August where death came to our city in a way that nobody ever imagined. And so our vigilance has been at a heightened point ever since then, to be on guard knowing that enemies do come with agendas to do their will and they will go through you if necessary. There's reasons to be worried if you're on guard, but you have your equipment and you're there. The women leaving as the sun is just starting to rise would have had worries themselves alone in the morning. People who love Jesus, if they would, if anyone would crucify as good a man as the Christ, surely any follower of Christ could be next. Whether it's jail or violence, whatever, unthinkable things. There's, there's things to worry about, things to fear. Well, and then the events of that morning happened. An earthquake. Here in El Paso, we had an earthquake. I didn't feel it. I was, I was snoozing. Um, but other, my, my son and uh, others in my family, they, they felt the shaking. And all of a sudden, the news starts talking about the fault line that runs down Highway 54 here in town. that I've known about, and I happen to live in a home that's not too far away from that. And so you know, earthquakes are worrisome events. No sword of a guard or shield or armor can protect you if rocks start to fall from an earthquake. But not only that. And this, this is especially where, when we, we talk about what it means to honor, uh, to have no other gods above, <laughs> no one other, what's that first commandment again? <laughs> you shall have no other gods before me. <laughs> that you would fear Love and trust in God above all things. There is an appearance, the presence of a servant of God that isn't always visible, but had made himself visible on that occasion. And it certainly drove fear into the hearts of those strong, equipped soldiers. This is how it's described. There was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. It's frozen in their tracks. Like dead men. Fear is a kind of death. Sure, the text means that they, they couldn't move, could hardly breathe. Maybe you've had nightmares like that where you kind of start to wake up and you 
can't really move or you feel like you can't even breathe because what's been going through your mind has been so fierce. Those are horrible moments. And worse maybe is if you fall asleep on your arm and then you, your, your arm actually is asleep and you can't move it. That happened to me once. I get worried because, well, this is my own personal experience that happened. And has it happened to you before? Tell each other about it after church. Uh, over your, your uh, Easter lunch, kids ask your parents, has your arm ever fallen asleep so much that you couldn't move it, that you had to reach over like Pastor Stephen and lift it up and flop it down on the bed and hope that it'll start to move? <laughs> it started to move, flopping. Terror, paralysis. There's a lot of situations that do that. God was making a statement that day to the powers of the world that glorious resurrection day morning. But there's a lot that drive fear into our lives and would cause us to not function in the way that God would have us function in life. God wants us to have peace and to be free to love one another, to to stand tall against the enemy, against the problems, and to, to run into the problem to bring help and to bring mercy and care, to shine in the, the light of Christ with our good works. But when we start to think about the problems of the world and we, we forget the resurrection of Christ, the promise of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the, the fulfillment of all righteousness of Jesus for us, well, our, I, our mind can fall from things above and get caught up and trapped in the things of this world. And we're going about washing our hands and really start to wonder, oh, what did I touch before I washed these hands? That food that I served to my family, that, that candy that I popped in my mouth, can start to get fearful and our heart can start to race and anxiety attacks. Just every, every number of scenarios I could try to list. But you have your own experience of worry and anxiety and fear in these days of the, the, the separation because of the coronavirus, the, these days of terroristic threat, of mass shootings, of ne necessary armed engagements throughout the world, of business failure. Uh, some people have been reaching out and we've been praying for them. They had trouble finding jobs before everyone had to stay home. And now they especially can't find a job. And how are you going to buy food? Oh, and you're saying, man, Pastor Stephen, stop talking about these things. You're just driving my mood down. But, but Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, was a context of trouble. Politically, economically, relationally, racially, religiously, thinking the worst of others. And having that poisoned relationship spiral into so many things. So therefore, how much, how much wonder and joy we can have that we can share with the, the followers of Jesus as they discovered that that light that is Christ was still shining. Because Jesus had risen that reading from Acts talked about how, and this is written you know, in the years after Jesus' resurrection as they then went on, the followers of Christ went on to continue to worship him, to break the bread and share the wine that was his body and in his blood and to give witness to the good news of his resurrection. Many of them went to their execution. They went to jail. They were persecuted because of it. And yet they would say that we saw him. He appeared to us. We ate with him. He wasn't just a hallucination. He wasn't some uh, hope, hopeful wish of an anxious heart or a disappointed people. No. We touched him. We saw him. We t spoke with him. We ate with him. And he commanded us to give testimony that he is coming again. 
That's in Acts, that verse 42. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to judge, be judge of the living and the dead. The Old Testament prophets spoke of him and we speak of him because he will come again and we can trust that just as he said he would rise and just as he did rise, he will come again. And when he does, all who have faith, who are ready, made ready in baptism, in the, the hearing of his good news and that the strengthening of faith that he does, that he prepares us for, it will be a day of joy, of rejoicing. The trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. We will be transformed Illness will have no place in our forever. Weapons of war will be beaten down into farming equipment. <laughs> It'll be a new day. And so we remember the promises of God and the fulfillment of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and I pray that it would strengthen you and it would elevate your thinking even as we suffer through trouble and tribulation, even as we modify our behaviors in ways that would show care to others and protect people from germs and other troubles in life, that you would be fortified and lifted high in the joy of the resurrection of Jesus because in that resurrection you too have life, not by your worth, but because of your unworth. Jesus brings his worth and his victory. Because God loves you and me. And that's why. And so we look to an, each new day, remembering that we are baptized, that we are joined to Christ in his resurrection, and we will live even if we die. And so in the meantime, how can we love? How can we share some bacon with our family members, even as we regret that we can't be all together. I tell you, I mentioned in one of these services recently that I'm going through potluck uh, uh, withdrawal. And uh, especially Easter Sunday, it's our, it's our normal practice to uh, have a sunrise service and then we can have a long, lengthy breakfast together and then have our time of worship and then we break the bread and receive Christ in that holy sacrament of the altar. Uh, there's a lot that that we wish was different, but Easter isn't those things. Easter is Jesus. Easter is the resurrection of Christ and the living presence of Christ with you now where you are, wherever you are, wherever you go, wherever you will be, Jesus will be with you. And even if it circumstances send you to the grave, you don't go there alone. You go wrapped up in the one who has already gone there and broken free. And he will raise us. He will raise you. We look forward to that. So God be with you and bless this day of resurrection. But not only today, this season of Easter is many weeks long. The season of Easter, uh, each Sunday will give us opportunity to look at other passages related to the resurrection of Christ, the events that unfolded. Uh, so for the next uh, month and a half, we'll be gathering our hearts and our ears and our our uh, praises and our hopes around the scriptures concerning the resurrection. And I invite you to join us uh, for all of that online. And uh, we pray that the Lord would uh, uh, make it his wonderful miracle that they would be safe to gather once again all together. And we uh, will keep our ears and our eyes open uh, for smart people like Sarah and Arlen, our medical folks, uh, give good guidance. And of course, our government leaders. So we'll pray for them during the prayers of